Join me on a journey where we will meet people who live, work and enjoy life right here in the far north. I'm joined by star chef Frida Runge, who is culinary leader at some of Stockholm's finest restaurants. She has come all the way up here to look for new creative impulses. My good friend Stig Bareksten is also coming. He's the founder of an award-winning Nordic gin distillery, and he's on the hunt for new and exciting flavors. My name is Arne Eltnes, and I'm taking you to meet the fantastic people of the North. Welcome to Lofoten. Thank you. Lofoten is home to some of the best fisheries in Norway. This is going to be such an experience. Hopefully, we will have some good food. And yeah. it's going to be a lot of fish. It's <laughs> going to be a lot of fish. Lofoten and its many islands stretch out into the Norwegian Sea like pearls on a string. The best way to come here is by boat, like we did. Each little village or town on these islands has something to offer. It's an experience just waiting to be picked. Our first stop is Anita's Seafood at Sakirisoy, where manager Mia greets us at the door. To start the day, what can be better than a fresh cup of coffee and some chocolate, of course? We have reached uh, Sakirisaya and this uh, fantastic place where Mia is one of the strong women that are important in forming Lofoten of today. And Mia, what's the story about Sakirisaya? Sakirisaya is a, it's a tiny village, tiny island where my great-great-grandfather settled in the late 1800s. He had a vision to, to create a, a place where we could um, receive the fish. Yeah, and it's still based on the fantastic sources of fish from the sea. That's really still your base of your business. Yes, it's absolutely what's uh, the core of everything we do. Experiences are um, based on all senses. So it's like the landscapes that we're in, uh, like with our stockfish and our products, it's crafted by locals, it's flavored by nature. Everything is very connected uh, with nature and our surroundings. What would you say are your um, most popular products for the seafood bar? What, what do you think we should eat? Uh, we have our world famous fish burger. They are um, topped with salmon and shrimps made by hand. The burgers, they are super nice. Uh, we also have a very popular fish soup. I'm getting more and more hungry in Mia, <laughs> and I really want to taste some of the delicacies you have here. Good. And I'm so glad that you, as a fifth generation, is uh, keeping the tradition going here at Sakirisaya. Thank you. Stunning setting at Sakirisaya is inspiring, and so is the food. At Anita Seafood, the fish burger is really packed with treasures from the sea. What a treat! How was the uh, fish up <laughs> thing? Oh, it was fantastic. A little bit spicy as well, so it's mm. super nice. This is big. This is big and it's... Yeah. It's difficult with chopsticks. Yeah, but I love to eat with chopsticks, you know. Even burgers? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I mean, sh at least the shrimps. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing that you are in a fairly remote place like this and you have this quality restaurant. Everything here is so fresh, delicious, and uh, yeah, it's God is in the details everywhere here. It's really worth a journey. Just Definitely. To eat here. And you know, every table is a window table. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Did you know that codfish from Lofoten was Norway's first commodity, eaten and appreciated all over the world? It was the fish that laid the very foundation for all these villages. Without the cod, it would be very few settlements. Here we are in Balsta, Stig. We stayed over there at uh, Hemingodden. And they also have some street art over here. <laughs> Quite big. Quite big. It's the biggest in uh, Europe. And it's painted by the artist Scott Toe. How big is it? <laughs> it's 20,000 square feet. Wow. But we know that this port goes way back. It's at least 
a thousand years of fishing here. Actually, they found some uh, Viking burial sites on the other side there. And the reason why people live in Lofoten is the cod. Mm. And it's the perfect place to make the dried codfish. They hang it up. The temperature here doesn't get too cold. There are no insects. And the fish, they have plenty of food in the sea. It's a perfect place for making the dried codfish. So this is the reason why people have lived in Balsta for at least a thousand years. And this is the reason why they will keep on living here. The dried codfish goes all over the world. And I think we should dive into it, know a little bit about the history and maybe taste. Yeah. Let's go. For more inspiration, visit our website, peopleofthenorth.net. We're here together with Liv Margrethe Hansen from the fantastic family company, Halvors. They make outstanding fish products. And this is a dried codfish, Stig. Yeah. Looks strange. It's hard. <laughs> it's <laughs> almost <laughs> like a bat. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit, how is it produced? Uh, so this is a stockfish. So it's produced by a type of cod that's called skrei. And skrei is a cod that migrates from the Barents Sea to the coast of northern Norway. We take the skrei and hang it outside, and it's dried outside for three months. So what we do, we take the, the dry stockfish, put it into water for several days, and during the watering process, we remove every skin, all the skin, bones, and we make it ready. And then it becomes a, a wonderful product like this. But and this is not only a delicate tassie for us Norwegian, you also export. Yes, stockfish is very important in Italy, for mm. example. We've been exporting stockfish to Italy for hundreds of years. Maybe our friend Gunnar can make some magic out of this dried codfish loin. I try. Thank <laughs> you. And what are you cooking for us? Today I'm going to make a, a pan-fried stockfish. Yeah, it's a soup base wow. uh, made of the skins and bones from the produce from the when they produce the stockfish. Oh, the smell yeah. is fantastic. It's tomato. It's it's almost like a dashi, right? Yeah, yeah. it's like a, a combination of a mm. French pula base mm. and a Japanese mm. dashi. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, let's it's start. Good. Okay. So Gunnar, please tell me exactly what you have on the plate now. So I have the pan-fried stockfish. We have some salted uh, cabbage. It's a soup on, based on the bones of, from the stockfish and also mushrooms with soy sauce or uh, unagi sauce mm. and some spring onions. Wow, it looks so delicious. I hope, please taste. You can really feel the flavor of the dried cod and the soup, the broth you made. It's just a perfect combination of flavors. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Stig, this um, we have been doing for quite some time. Yeah, over a thousand years. Over a thousand years. <laughs> this is the fish from Bolsta. It is, and uh, I think we can keep up another thousand years if you ask me. <laughs> this was Definitely. so good. Yeah. Thank you, Gunnar. Thank you, Gunnar. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, hopefully the fish in the sea will last for another thousand years, as the abundance of cod in Lofoten during the annual winter season still is phenomenal. Off the beaten track, but well worth the visit. Next up is a historical fishing village, a hamlet by the sea. This is Nusfjord. It's uh, probably the best preserved fishing village in the whole of Lofoten, Frida. Yes, I mean, it's the second time I'm here, actually, and uh, for me, this is one of the most prettiest little villages in Lofoten. And today, this place is still a fishing village, and Stig, they have a special store here. It's not a grocery store. No, it's a landhandleri. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a place where you can buy everything. It's a mix between hardware and food. Software? Uh, <laughs> software. <laughs> they only had uh, one store. Yeah. And it had to have everything. One stop. We should go and take a look. Yes. Yes, on a landhandel. So here you have the opportunity to learn a very important Norwegian word <laughs> from Lofoten. <laughs> the landhandel. That's the place to go to because it was the only place yeah. you could go shopping. So let's go. Let's go shopping. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> this is truly a long handle stick. Absolutely. Well, they have everything. Yeah, they have actually everything. 
shoe polish, tobacco, coffee, ammunition. It was really a place that was so important. The fishermen had been out fishing, they got some money for the fish. Yeah. And then they could go in here and buy nice clothing. A or little gift to uh, To someone. the fishing wife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lam yeah. fantastic. Hi. Hello, my favorites. Ooh. Are you hungry? Yes. 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 Nice, because I just made a little lunch for you, and um, this is a Norwegian salmon burger from Kvarøy. Some pickled uh, wakame seaweed and cucumber in rice vinegar, and also some sprinkled dried seaweed. Hope you Thank you, Fira. Thank, Thank you. Perfect little lunch. Yeah. For more inspiration, visit our website peopleofthenorth.net. With plenty of humor and warm after lunch, we set out to our last destination. Going by car in Lofoten, I would say, is the ultimate car trip. Beautiful at almost every turn. And just a couple of miles before the very end of the road, on the southernmost tip of Lofoten, there it is. Holman Boutique Hotel and Culinary Restaurant, run by the ambitious Ingun Rasmussen. Ingun and Audun, brother and sister, you grew up here, but give us a little bit of the history of Holman Hotel. I bought this place back in 2001 with the idea of putting up a small cabin, but very soon I found that oh, these old buildings needed some more tender care and not to be teared down. So we started in, in the small building up the old buildings. And by 2007, we opened with a restaurant and three apartments. You got some, uh, I would say, rather international help in the kitchen. Yes, we do. Between 2007 and 2017, I was living partly abroad and partly in the south of Norway, and uh, for a period staying in South Korea. 500 TV channels, but only one channel that I could understand, and that was BBC. <laughs> and then watching Valentine Warner's different TV programs where he traveled the world for BBC, and I just found that he fitted very well in with our concept. I wrote him a mail and said, could you please consider <laughs> coming to Norway? And he answered, in fact, I think it was the same night, said, I can come in February. And I thought, this February, but it was two years ahead. <laughs> and then he just came and, and I think he just fell in love. Odin, you grew up here. And there is something about the strong women of, of Lofoten. There has always been strong women in Lofoten. Would Lofoten be the same without these strong women? No, <laughs> that's true. You hear, Inge, yes, that uh, yes. uh, it's uh, actually something that we have seen also now that there are strong women behind what's what's happening and what's developing Lofoten. Yes, it always have been, and I think uh, the reason is partly because fishermen went off, and then the only one to take care of uh, everything else was the women. I think that, that there is quite a few strong ladies in the community, and uh, all of them running their own businesses and, and uh, developing the, the area. Everyone who comes here loves it. Of course, the women of Lofoten is something that's inspiring also for us who are only here for a shorter time. But inside here now is my friend Stig, and he has prepared something special for us to drink before dinner. Well, all good? All is well and good, yes. I wanted to do an infusion in the vermouth with the dulce seaweed. Mm -hmm. I think you're right to, to pick dulce of all the many seaweeds out here because this is particularly savoury. It's got a sweetness to it. It's, it's a very, very delicious seaweed to use. <laughs> and it also has this licorice-ish flavour, as I experienced. Yeah. Like and yeah. I think that's cool with gin. I think, it's the, I think it's the perfect seaweed for the job. It's very delicate what you've made. Yeah. I mean, it's not overpowering, but it's undoubtedly there. But salt, it can't enhance so much flavours. You know oh, this one? I, know, I do know that one. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm very honoured that for somebody who makes gin themselves that you chose ours. I know this gin is fantastic. We normally use local gins or yeah. local spirits when we travel around here, but uh, since you're a distiller, I found it quite natural to use your. And we made it for martini drinkers. You made it for me. I made it for you. <laughs> Thank you. And if it's, uh, if it's a good, good gin, I mean, 
Okay, we need some glasses. Two seconds. I think you can add a little bit of flair to this one. This is almost like popping a Viagra into the bottom of a martini. Your <laughs> eyes dilate as that mineral twang overtakes you and sounds, you feel, you feel warlike. Sounds dangerous. Uh, oh my lord, that's a beautiful thing. It looks nice though. Ice and urchins. Oh, let's try this one. Skoll. Skoll. With immediate 100% honesty. I look into your eyes and I say that is one of the best martinis I have ever drunk. Thank you. This is like an elegant silver brick being thrown through the front <laughs> window of your day. Fantastic. Thank mm. you. Mm. Oh, that's a, that's a work of genius. It's the saltiness. It kind of enhanced the earthiness in the gin, I would say. The dulce really, really comes through, mm. but in a very delicate way. Yeah. This should be your uh, martini, sir. Arctic yeah. martinis. Let's <laughs> go. Let's go. We were curious of what, what was happening down here. Yeah, we have pre prepared a drink for you. Your snow-chilled martinis. So this is the new signature martini here at Holman. What do you think? I um, feel like I'm also tasting the sea outside. You were very clever to use this. I mean, this is sweet, it's a, and it's very delicate, what you made. Frida inspired me to use that one. Chew on the little treat at the bottom. Yeah, I'll get to it uh, in the you end. Will. I know I will get in to it. In a little bit, we will get there. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort mm. of, I like the journey uh, until I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to ask you, Valentin, how did you end up here? An extraordinary woman rang me some five or six years ago, or emailed me, I can't quite remember, and said, I've been looking at you from a distance. She was working in Korea, and I think you might fit in. So come and see me. Ingen rang me and I said, sure, I'm coming. And I found myself surrounded in this lovely wooden room, drinking Aquavit um, and, uh, and eating cod. And I, I kind of fell in love on the, on the spot and left having said, I, I, I want to work with you. Ingen said that um, you also looked like you were actually from here. Oh, did she? Yeah. <laughs> That's very kind of her to say, but if I was walking towards a lot of Norwegian men I see here, banging on their shields with their axes, I'd be running in a different, different direction, <laughs> weeing in my trousers. <laughs> so it's very nice to be told that. This was a fabulous start on our gastronomic stay here, and I think uh, you it too in the kitchen, and um, Stig and I finishing more of this. It's going to be a great evening. I'm so excited to, uh, to be here in the kitchen with you. Likewise. I'm going to do some small uh, dishes for you, but you are also going to cook for us. Well, from the kitchen window, in the, the waters you see out there, millions and millions and millions of, of scray cod are arriving, as they do every year, um, to breed. And so, really, cod, it had to be cod today. The fish would normally be opened up and gutted from the underneath, yeah. but I have gone through its back. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do mm -hmm. yeah. um, is very liberally kind of make a lovely white layer of salt mm -hmm. um, yes. onto here. And then I'm going to open this up mm -hmm. and I've kind of turned it into a receptacle, so to speak. If you would, in here mm -hmm. we have onions, we have ham, we have caper berries, mm. we have juniper and mm. caraway. Fantastic. And then here we put lots of lemon juice into these crumbs mm. and then dried it out so they're sour. Mm. Um, and there's mm. fennel seeds and lots mm. of fennel seeds and black pepper and mm. lemon zest. And so wow. all of that is mm. going to go into here. I'm looking so much forward to is this cod now. <laughs> well, so I hope so. If you said, God, I don't mm. want to eat your cod, <laughs> you know, what would I do? You know, I like drama. I thought if you mm. came, we had to have something that was dramatic. <laughs> But we want to start filling up the cod. Here, because um, by the time the fish would cook, the crumbs would have burnt. Yeah. So just for the beginning. Mm -hmm. When we are waiting for the cod, 
I'm gonna give you one of my favorite things to eat as breakfast in Sweden. Which I'm very much looking forward to. What a time for breakfast. The sun's <laughs> oh my gone God. down. So I'm a little bit embarrassed because Why? this is because you are cooking like really cool uh, whole fish, uh, whole grey with uh, super cool things. And I'm I'm here with the um, crisp bread with the uh, seaweed. Which is <laughs> Some egg and it, caviar. <laughs> the, the fact <laughs> that you have bought something to squeeze out of a tube, I only love you more, actually. <laughs> okay. And so I fully <laughs> approve of such things. So this is crisp bread with seaweed mm -hmm. uh, from Lofoten. Which of seaweed? It's butare, um, sugar kelp. This caviar is made from codro, so I'm also using the cod. Well, I think it's so right that we've both done cod. Exactly. I'm also adding a little bit of uh, the seaweed salt, the smoked mm. seaweed smoked salt. Smoked seaweed salt. To... And dill, one of my favorite herbs. So nice. And uh, fish and dill or egg and dill is just like a perfect combination. This is a typical Frida breakfast or snack. And I think in our different ways, we both kind of lovers of simplicity. Exactly. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Mm -hmm. Breakfast so can be so boring. Some yeah. cereal, some yeah. lucky charms, and so, you know, and then you can eat wonderful things like these. Of or, course. You, know, you prefer wonderful. this every day in the week. Yeah, it's a good start to the day. That's mm. delicious. Mm. Mm -mm. They actually made the bread for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very dry. It, it is rather, but, <laughs> but then you have eggs and lovely yeah. things on top. Mm. I was thinking to uh, do a little amuse-bouche to our other friends. Wonderful. And then I made ponzu soy sauce here. So what's in your ponzu? This is uh, tamari, mm. some lemon, some wasabi oil mm -hmm. and some sesame. It's very important for ponzu, I think, isn't it, that you have a very sharp, something very fresh, but very umami and salty, but then it should have a real... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. This is the, exactly delicious. the reaction I was looking for. And then... Just add a little sesame seeds on top. Mm, yum. Those are very good. Good things happening in Holman. Yeah. I think the time has come. Oh my God, this grey looks so delicious. It's kind of rough and ready, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Now, I've got a little finishing touch I want to do for you. Wow. I'm not wow. quite there yet. Mm -hmm. Just in the car park, actually. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite plants grows, obviously very important for gin, juniper. Mm -hmm. But the wood smells amazing. Have a little smell. Smell the oh. smoke from that. Wow, wow, wow. Just a little burning juniper. And I like the idea that you're standing by the juniper, mm. the cod is swimming. Mm. And it all comes together before we give it to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should try should it. Should we have it. a try? So I think it would only be right if you go in first. Okay. Yeah. Mm. 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 It's so delicious. Oh my god. Thank you so much. Fresh cod and stale bread. Mm. Mm. It's so delicious. So this is sashimi of halibut. Okay, I'm gonna do also a little taste mm -hmm. here for you because I know that you also like uh, Japanese flavors, right? I love Japanese food. Mm. Mm. It's very, very fresh, extremely fresh. And you can taste the halibut. Mm. You can actually taste the kombu as well. I think the other guys will be happy. I think they'll all be happy. And if they're not, they can get out and stand, <laughs> stand in the cold. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so I've much. Had such a nice afternoon. Yeah, me too, definitely. So now we have uh, had so many fantastic moments at Holman, but I think we're going to top it all. What's happening over at your side? We had a very lovely afternoon in the kitchen. We stuffed giant cod, we squeezed things out of tubes. I <laughs> love her for turning up with a tube of caviar. Chefs, <laughs> chefs are too complicated. Out came the squeezy <laughs> stuff. It was, and we we made a lot of food in a very short amount of time. Yeah. So we have a it's stuffed with breadcrumbs, bacon, and herbs, and scented seeds, and it's really everything about the cod out there, and not throwing old loaves of bread away, and good provincial stuff that this place is so wonderful for. You can see that the fish is perfectly cooked. We live in hope. <laughs> <laughs> To honour you, the best piece of all should go to you. Oh. There you go.
is a lovely Thank cheek. Thank you. And what a great group of people you have here. Ingrid. Fantastic. Yay. Thank you. Yes. What a great way to end the stay at the end of the road at Holmen at the end of Lofoten. Skål! Skål! Skål.